Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder All Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about Tropical Storm Guillermo, as well as Category 4 Hurricane Felicia, and then an update on the Caribbean and the Atlantic, plus a little bit of education on one of the features that I look for that helps me predict tropical cyclones. So if you do like weather ready content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is your uh, July 17th update, and this is a, a, an expanded version of the Pacific and the Atlantic side. You can definitely see out here in the Atlantic, there is just not much happening currently right now. We do have a little bit of instability uh, down here in Central America by uh, Nicaragua, down here in uh, Costa Rica, as well as Panama. We also have a lot of uh, convection over the Yucatan, but over here, this is a stalled boundary out here into, uh, into the, the U.S. coastline. That's dumping some very heavy rain. We have an active monsoon because we've got two tropical entities that we'll look at. This is Hurricane Felicia, and this is newly formed Tropical Storm Guillermo. And check this out. Look like it lo almost a funnel effect that's enhancing the monsoon flow that we've been seeing the last week. And I think that just continues with these active systems in the Pacific. Plus we have another feature that'll be going into the Pacific as well that'll also enhance uh, the monsoon flow for the rest of the week and, and the week ahead. So let's get right to it. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at the zoomed in version of Hurricane Felicia. Man, this thing exploded. This is our first major hurricane of the season. It is 145 miles an hour. That's a category four hurricane. And this thing is tiny, folks. I mean, this is, there's just, it's very little, but it's small and it's a beast. Fortunately, this is out in the middle of nowhere. And I think it's actually reached its peak intensity and then it will start uh, coming down as expected to go down to a hurricane as well by a Monday morning. And there's Hawaii. There's the first island of Hawaii. You can definitely see it's expected to be a tropical depression before it even closely reaches uh, uh, Hawaii. So I don't really expect any impact uh, for land for uh, Hurricane uh, Felicia. But if we zoom in to Tropical Storm uh, Guillermo, this is also moving west-northwest. This is actually a little bit further north than what uh, Felicia was. That's helping the monsoon, even though this one won't be direct, directly impacted land either. This will have indirect impacts and spread more precipitation into New Mexico, into uh, you know Arizona, and even parts of California is going to get into the action with this just bottle effect that's going to be feeding into the monsoon over the coming week with this just additional moisture is going to be uh, amplified into into the Pacific. So now let's take a look at a, a feature that kind of helps me predict tropical cyclones. It is the what they call the MJO, which is the Man and Julie Oscillation. So I kind of wanted to slow down and kind of help you understand on how this mechanism works. So it's essentially, it's a major fluctuation in tropical weather on a weekly or monthly time scales. It, it's a system basically that moves from uh, eastward uh, th on, through the equator. So whenever you, and it recurs every approximately 30 to 60 days. So this is just a, just a, a, a scale. So whenever you have a, in green, this is what they call an enhanced feature. So whenever you have what they call upward rising motion air, so when air is able to rise, it's obviously able to create those towering thunderstorms. And the more thunderstorms it's able to develop, then the more possibilities it's able to rotate. And then you have possibly a tropical cyclone. Whenever it's in a suppressed phase, this brown shaded area phase, that's when the air sinks. And so as thunderstorms tries to rise, you have sinking air and it's, you have a lot of suppressed air over that particular location. And it's even, it's a little bit more difficult uh, for tropical uh, cyclones uh, to develop. So yeah, this is approximately cycles through every 30 to 60 days. In fact, this year's M MJO cycle is right around 46 days. Okay, so keep that number in mind. So as we move forward, here's what we're looking at currently. This is this is the MJO, a chart from 
July the 12th through July the 26th. And look where it was in July the 12th. It was going into phase three. That means it was in phase two when Tropical Storm Elsa hit. So if you remember, it made impact when we were in phase two of the Managuli Oscillation. That is the most favorable phase of the MJO. A lot of these, a lot of these oranges shaded area that indicates a lot of upward rising motion air. In fact, a lot of the Atlantic, a lot of the Gulf, a lot of the Eastern Coast has a lot of upward rising motion in that uh, air in that phase. That's why it's the most easiest phase for tropical storm development to occur. And that's why Elsa, when it was able to form off the Cape Verde Islands, traverse through Jamaica and come through the Gulf and impact Florida and also almost redevelop off the coast here because we were continuing in an active uh, M MJO phase. So as we go through now, we can definitely see now we're in phase four and five in this blue shaded area. That's the that's the brown. That's a lot of that suppressed air, right? That's a lot of the sinking type air. So it's very difficult for tropical storm to development to come to fruition. There's only a sneaking area right here in the northwestern Gulf of Mexico that sometimes you could have tails of a you know uh, frontal boundaries get into over the waters and may may have a quick spin up, but it's not very likely, right? You have a lot of sinking air in this area. Uh, but that you also have some upward rising motion air out here into uh you know you know you know eastward and west eastward in the uh, lesser antilles so sometimes you might have some little tropical storm development way out here uh, you know coming to fruition but these are the these are the phases that it's in so, so right now we're basically in phase four and phase five it's it's a pretty suppressed phase and then it'll eventually We'll go into phase six by the end of the month and look what phase six looks like. We do see a little bit of a tropical development trying to occur down here by Costa Rica, by Panama, uh, maybe a little bit of each small feature in the, uh, the Bay of Campeche, and then also off the far northeastern coast. But again, it's pretty suppressed. It's not very active. So if we do look at what's look to come over the next two weeks, it's no coincidence. Look, this is the ensemble member guidance for the next two weeks. It's primarily kind of lull, right? But the only areas that look like they might have even a chance to have some sort of tropical storm uh, formation are the areas that the MJO calls for possibly in that upward rising motion area. So if you can see this area right here going into phase six, that's why you know, or phase four and five, that's why we have this little orange shaded area here of some indicative of small amounts of upward rising motion air. And we also see this development off the Northeast coast as well. And that's, yeah, again, you see going into phase six, you see that little bit of piece of upward rising motion air. So, but predominantly we're not really expecting too much going on uh, in on the Atlantic side because we're in essentially a non-favorable phase of phase four and five and going into six and seven but eventually this will swing around and like I mentioned this approximately this year swings around every 46 days so that essentially means a pattern may repeat itself every 46 days of the cycle so hypothetically we would eventually go into beginning in august a little bit more active phase going into phase eight and one because this will continue swinging around and you can definitely see in the gulf of mexico parts of the east coast it has a lot of orange indicated to it but then this will continue swinging around as we go deeper into august potentially going back into that more favorable phase of phase two and three by the time really after mid-month, the mid-August time frame, this is the area that I'm looking at a little bit, bit, little bit more active in the, in, on the Atlantic side. So if we go forward, take a look at the next uh, 10 days, you can definitely see there's this area of this blue, this upward rising motion air. And this is what the MJO called for, some upward rising motion air down here by Panama, down here by Costa Rica. Uh, that's where uh, that's where we look like we have a little bit more susceptible for so that upward rising motion air for those thunderstorms to occur. This is the area that would tra traverse across onto the Pacific side. And remember, it moves 
eastward. So right now it's located in the Pacific currently, but that's why the Pacific is fairly active. And that's why it's probably gonna to continue to remain active over the next several weeks. But eventually by August, that same area that it's over at the Pacific is gonna be over on the Atlantic side. And they call that in that enhanced phase, that green shaded area that I showed you, that enhanced phase. So that'll be a little bit more susceptible for thunderstorms to start to rise and possibly start to uh, rotate and form some sort of low level center. So that's the uh, area of concern as we go into uh, August time frame. And look, by the end of the month, this is what I'm looking at here. Yeah, it shows that very active phase in the Pacific side, but this will continue uh, to traverse uh, eastward. And eventually after we get into that August time frame, especially deeper into August, really mid month and beyond, we look to be in those phases eight, one, you know, two and three of the MJO, which is a lot more favorable phases. And that's again, gonna probably be on the Atlantic side as we go into uh, the month of August. So now let's take a look at last year. So if, if the MJO hypothetically rotates around every 30 to 60 days, and this year it's every 46 days, so if a pattern repeats itself, yeah, it's no coincidence that some of these hurricanes or tropical formed, you know, entities land in predominantly the same place within a six or a seven week time span. And that actually happened last year. If you recall, Hurricane Laura made landfall on August the 27th in Louisiana, right? As a devastating storm, it rapidly developed. But then literally 43 days later, we had Hurricane Delta basically made landfall 12 miles away. That is no coincidence. That's essentially the MJO saying, hey, this is a pattern's gonna repeat itself every certain time frame. And that's they also call that the recurring cycle theory. So hypothetically, based on the MJO, on the cycles, you can somewhat maybe look at certain areas of making landfall again you know six weeks down the line so if we progress forward what is interesting let's take a look at tropical storm elsa okay now everybody knows Elsa that recently just happened and then when we were in active phase two which was that very active upward rising motion phase right so this traverse came out exactly i mean came out of the caribbean ran through the Lesser Antilles, ran through the island of Jamaica, came through Cuba and actually made landfall on July the 6th, okay? So based on the MJO and this continuing moving across, hypothetically, we would be in phase two 46 days from now on August the 21st. So if a pattern repeats itself every 46 days, Hypothetically, we could make a little bit of a, a certain, little bit of a, a probability. In fact, there's an 84% probability of another entity, a tropical storm entity, could be in and around this same area around that 46 days from the July the 6th, August 26th. And if it doesn't happen that time frame, it could move around again on October the 6th another 46 days from August 21. So that is just a little bit of a mechanism that I currently use. So those two dates in mind, if you live in this, this particular area on the west coast of Florida, there's a high probability of a potentially another tropical storm entity around the August 21st timeframe, around the October 6th timeframe, a possibly being in and around off the west coast of Florida again, because we essentially would be hypothetically be in active phase two again. So that is just definitely one of the features that I look at, uh, you know, to help me predict uh, tropical storm uh, entities, you know, going forward. So, hey, I appreciate you uh, watching this video. If you did like it, please like it, leave your comments below and definitely subscribe to my channel where I keep you ahead of the storm.